this video, we're going to focus on the steel satin stitch. And it's a little bit different than the regular satin stitch because it functions just like a run stitch would, where you just create a line and then it's going to um, convert that line into a steel a satin stitch and that satin stitch is a defined width so if I go to the digitizing tools um, you can access it up here as well but on the floating toolbar if you have it open it's located right here and it is you can see it's in the same shape as the run stitch and that's just kind of showing you that you create using the same method so let's go ahead and create uh, click on that I'm just gonna left click a couple times right here and then right mouse click just to show you what a steel stitch is um, so I have this open here and if I select it you'll notice up here it says 2.5 in the width so a steel stitch has a uniform width throughout the whole thing and that's what makes it different than our than the other satin tool because the other satin tool will let you do um, a wavy line like on this side you could have it straight or wavy here this one you have to have it the same width throughout the entire um, length so that's what makes it different this is what's used a lot in doing a border or outline or anything that's kind of more straight line it's a great tool I use it quite a bit um, but you just have to understand that it's defined in the width throughout. You can't vary that. So let's go ahead and uh, zoom out here. So when you're creating um, the with the steel stitch, you just come in, you select it, and you use it um, just like a run stitch where you'll click your first point. And if I'm going around a curve, I'll hold down control and I'll go around the shape, but uh, as we learned in other videos when you're doing this and whenever you change a direction like right here there's a direction change a sharp change I have to drop a stitch I have to release that control key drop a stitch there and then hold down control again to go back into the curve and once I get to this point again I need to release the control key and drop a stitch just a straight one and now I can hold down control again if I don't do that, I'll back up a couple here. If I hold down control and I click here and then I keep the control press down and click, it's going to curve that line. As you can see there, it actually curved it and that's not what I want. So once I get to this point, I need to release the control key, click once, and then I can and I usually do it close to the other one and now I can hold down control and go around the shape again um, it's just important to understand you know how to use the tool and how to handle um, the curves going from a curve to a straight and doing straight line you've seen is really simple to do so you just left click you don't have to hold down control so you can see this is the steel stitch here. Um, there'll be a video on editing and working with the steel stitches, but basically you can do underlay. Um, width is the main thing. You might want it to be 3.5 millimeters wide. And density, those are the things like right here that are the main things that are adjusted with it and underlay and stuff. And we'll get into a video on how to adjust that so um, you'll want to watch that so when we come over here to this cloud shape um, we do it just the same way so you're just um, holding down control I'm gonna start in it in a, a like intersection where the lines are going different directions here and that's just what I always do I don't know why but I do um, I'm going to click around and again I'm going to have to drop a stitch releasing the control key now I can hold down control and go around this shape it's um it's really easy and the main thing with this tool is you just have to know how to go around curves and going from a straight to a curve and so let's bring up another shape here 
that does that. It kind of focuses on both. And I always use these custom shapes. And the reason I do is because you all have them in your, um, in your software. So you can easily replicate what I'm doing here. And these are great for practice. So this one right here, we have some straight lines and then we have some curves. And so this is the hardest part is just learning how to use it. So if I come here and I can hold down control and go around, I'm just going to release that control key and I'm just going to go all the way over to this side and click. And now I'm going to drop a stitch because I can't just hold down control or else it'll curve this entire um, line and this edge right here. So I'm going to drop a stitch and now I'm going to hold down control. Like I said, you just have to practice with this tool and to get to where you understand when you need to hold down control around curves and when you need to release it. I've got to release it here because um, I don't want it to curve around that point. So I'm going to left click here, left click here. I can go all the way to the edge because these are straight lines. Just left mouse clicking. I'm not holding down control. And to get back to this one, straight line, I'm just going to close it using the close shape. And it's going to create that stitch. So it's really easy to work with it. Um, shapes like this can be a little bit more complicated and all depending on the size of it. Um, sometimes you may or may not get the results that you want. And if I just go around this really quick and I'm holding down control and releasing it, you know, kind of how I showed you. So there's a lot of releasing it and clicking a point and then holding down control again. Um, but when I get to this area, I don't have to do that. I can just keep on going around with holding control because it's not a sharp edge. But right here, I'm going to have to now release, click, and then I can hold down control and go the rest of the way. Hope that this is making sense to you. Um, like I said, you just have to kind of practice with it. And I'm going to release it and go straight down, releasing that control key, and I can come up and around the shape again. I'm not going to get it perfect. I'm going to just do it really quick because we'll show you how to edit. I'm not pressing down control right there. I'll drop a stitch and now I'll hold down control again and I'll go around that shape. But I'll just quickly show you kind of the things that can happen because we're creating this all as one object right now. And so there's a lot of corners here and corners are the only things that you really have to worry about when you're dealing with these satin stitches. Um, corn, like the satin stitches are what I've called a lot of times the high maintenance stitches. And uh, because they're the most finicky and corners are what can really stand out with satin stitches. And so you really need to know how to work with them. And you can see in this one, it's okay. It's not bad. Um, if I start resizing it and I get it really kind of small, you'll see it starts not looking all that great, right? Um, like right here. So you, and this is really bunched up. I can change the width of this, but as far as I can only go down to about 1.5, 1 1.4, 1 1.5. And you can see it looks it looks much better that way it cleans it up, but that's a really thin satin stitch. But I just wanted to show that to you that um, the corners are what's going to really kind of stand out with using the steel stitch. If you get things that are too sharp, you, you can get some looks that you may or may not want. Um, like in this case, this is okay. It's not bad. But there's sometimes like if you make that smaller, it doesn't look as good. This one right here. We'll just do this one really quick. Um, it's the same thing. I'm going to do that other method though um, of bending the line because it'll save me some time here. Anytime I'm working with something like this, that there's a lot of like curves, I'm going to utilize 
the straight lines and then bend them. And when I get to this, I need to click and I will just go around this one because it's a pretty easy shape to go around holding down control. I'm not going to get it perfect again because I'm just doing this kind of quick, but um, now I'll close that line and it creates that, but I'll go into the edit mode and um, it's a little bit harder to see when you're working with this tool. Obviously you can see that um, and you can't really, you know, see those lines. So what I often do, because you create this the same way as you do a run stitch, I'll just convert it to a run and then I'll come in and I'll, a lot of times I'll just create it as a run, then I'll convert it to a steel. So this allows me to quickly come in here and just bend these lines, get it in the shape that I want. Right mouse click, select it and convert it to a steel down here. It's the same thing, but this is where I was talking about in the, it, it can start looking kind of weird. Um, when you use the steel stitch because it's you're creating this as one object and you're making the software determine where to um, put how to handle these curves and that's why a lot of times I would just use a regular satin stitch to go around it and um, I just want to point that out those are some of the things that you have to keep in mind and we will edit this um, we're gonna do a series on editing these stitches so you'll want to watch that for how to work with the steel stitches and what all you can do with it but that's it for this video we're gonna focus on the regular satin stitch in the next video